All right, guys, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. Got the 12 30 picks here for you. It is a small six game slate, small in comparison to kind of what we've had so far. Uh, just doing a quick recap of last night, I put this on the Twitter page. Um, it was another, you know, solid night. Typically at the start of the season, NBA season, and at the end of the NBA DFS season, it's when it's kind of the easiest. Um, you guys see here, Thomas Sadoramski was a guy that was popping on the nine to five. Uh, uh, cheat sheet here uh he was a guy that was projected to score 8x and i believe he ended up doing that Darius garland was another one that was really popping elfer payton with alec burks i was a guy that we were really on andre drummond just in a great matchup russell westbrook as well he ended up with 60 dk points so it was another solid night and that's i think a lot due to this cheat sheet now there are some human elements that you need to factor in there um but i really like the sheet it's been working out really well so just real quick kind of pointing out what i mean is that um Rondo here, Chris here. You know, I'm not exactly sure the minutes that they're going to get. Now, they could hit value if they get right around 20 minutes or so. We have to wait and see on that. We don't have that news just yet. Rondo, I actually don't mind. You could easily do that. But for now, I'm going to move the projected minute slider up. And that's an easy way to eliminate those players early on in the day that might be popping, that probably won't get those minutes, that probably won't be able to hit that value. That's kind of baking in, you know, their minutes as well. So I'll move this back down for now, and we'll get into the point guard picks. So the first one that I like, point guard wise is actually going to be Trey Young here so Trey Young he's kind of standing out to me as a play today um he's been a very consistent player thus far um the price is all right so if he gets those 50 DK points at this price and you know against Kyrie Irving defense I do see that happening so I really don't mind Trey Young at that price point but really other than that point guard wise nothing that I love um Drew Holiday I do like a decent amount actually so if you look at kind of the his last four games obviously did really well last night against the Miami um heat there they get him again and you know that was kind of a blowout three of their four games have been blowouts um obviously new york and golden state they blew him out didn't exactly get there so the kind of the worry here would be that the game blows out again and he's not able to get there but if the game does stay somewhat close i really do expect him to get 40 dk points and you know i don't expect the heat to play that poorly i don't expect the bucks to really dominate i mean they set a record in uh three pointers made uh, yesterday so that is something that you know i think is going to kind of balance out today and then really after that for me point card wise i kind of am looking at some value here dj augustine has played well thus far um had around 18 dk points yesterday and then peyton pritchard as well these guys look good for boston thus far um he had 25 dk points yesterday had right around 25 minutes as well in the game against memphis with john morant out i could expect you know that game might blow out and if it does Peyton Pritchard is going to get a little bit extra run as well in a night where there's not great value. I kind of like those plays. And then I will mention, you know, Chris was popping here a little bit. Um, this was mostly due to the fact that Kyrie Irving where everyone was out. So that's why I don't expect him to do anything. And then Rondo as well, since he was popping up a little bit, I'll pull him up. Um, you know, 15 minutes, if he gets right around 15 minutes again, he could get 20 DK points, but he's kind of priced up a little bit to the point where you, you do have to think about it and then move on into shooting guards here. All right. So shooting guards wise, it's kind of the same thing. Nothing that I overly love that much on the slate. It's just one where you're not going to feel great about the players that you're on thus far. Now this could change throughout the day, obviously, you know, value changes throughout the day but Bojan Bogdanovic here um I actually don't mind him so minutes have been there I think the minutes are going to continue to be there you know right around 30 minutes if the game stays close and I kind of do expect it to stay close and if it does stay close I expect him to get right around you know 25 to 30 DK points and at this price point that is something that is appealing to me and he can really open up a lot for you guys um on the slate um let's go a little bit lower here as well so obviously with Job Morant out one of these players here are going to do well for Memphis. We just got to figure out who it is. I don't mind Dylan Brooks. I feel like we're kind of paying up for him, but he has been consistent thus far. Um, give him a little bit more usage, and that is something that we like to see. The shot attempts have obviously been there for him. If he's going to be shooting that much at 6.2, that is absolutely too cheap. He's a guy that so far this morning I have been ending up on a decent amount. To me, it was a little bit surprising that Grayson Allen had his worst game of the season, uh, which I'm rant out. He... You know, at this price point, if he does end up getting 19 or 18 DK points, it's not going to hurt you. If he gets a little bit of extra run, you know, that is something that you kind of do want to see. Then there is some shooting guard news that is relevant. Uh, if Gary Trent Jr. is out, we're going to be looking at, you know, Rodney Hood here. 
because he's very cheap. Obviously, he's the min price. If he gets right around 20 minutes or so, you could easily see him gain 18 DK points. Obviously, at the minimum price, gain 18 DK points is something that you know we do like to do. And then you can really fit in a bunch of studs on the slate. So, you know, so far that's why I'm looking at for shooting guards. We'll move on into the small forwards here. This is where it starts to open up a little bit. Um, you know, Chris Middleton, I don't mind. Once again, if this game stays close, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, they're both going to get 40 DK points. And I just like that. But for me, Gordon Hayward to me is a standout play. And I'll try to pull him up here on the 9 to 5 uh, data sheet. So Gordon Hayward has played well thus far. Uh, we know that. But... <clears throat> Well, it loads, you know, 40 DK points, 31 DK points, 49 DK points. Even if he gets this floor of 31 DK points, he's going to have a good day. I mean, he's still going to hit value there, um, but I'm kind of expecting him to score, you know, right around 40 DK points. But all he has to do to really hit five to actually score 35 DK points. And you know, I, I expect that to happen. This game is one where, you know, you can easily stack it as well. I'm sure, the matchup might not be the best on paper here, but. Gordon Hayward's a play just at this price point. That makes a ton of sense to me. It's safe, and it does have upside as well. We'll pull up Kyle Anderson here as well. Kyle Anderson is someone that's popping to me as well. John Morant out. We saw Kyle Anderson kind of operate a lot more than I think most of us would have expected there. Kyle Anderson has been playing well this season as well. Um, just looking at him, he's a guy that's projected to score uh, 5.7 um, for value there. You know, that's a almost a 6x return. He's a guy that's scoring 1.1 DK points per minute. He's got a projection of 34 DK points. And at this price point, that is something that I do like a decent amount. Um, he's a guy that's been consistent as well. Other than the, you know, 25 or 22 DK points, still been playing well. The shot attempts have been up there the last two games, and I kind of expect that to continue. So, you know, Kyle Anderson it does kind of worry you there at that price point, but it is something that I think we can go with there. Um, really, there's not that much that I love here below um you know avery bradley he could get some more run if the game stays close and if uh jimmy butler is out again he'd be an option that we can go with uh moving on to power forwards this is where i really do start to like the slate a little bit uh pj washington kind of stand out plays to me on today's slate uh pj washington's kind of standing out uh with cody zeller out he's a guy that really stepped up um just looking at guys that are projected to have over 25 minutes He's the highest value that we have on the slate. P.J. Washington projected to score 36 DK points at 5.4. That is something that I really do like. So P.J. Washington, been a very consistent player. If we look back at last year as well, he really ended the season on a high note. So it's really not shocking that he's going out and playing well. I expect those shot attempts to continue to be up there in the double digits. And if they are, he's going to be a great play today. Uh, going a little bit lower power forward wise. After that, you know, we are kind of forcing some plays in that, you know, we might not feel that great about. We kind of got to wait and see it on the injury news here as well. What's going on there? Is LeBron going to play? Because then AD would be decent. Uh, obviously, Perzingis is out. Uh, Markeith Morris most likely out. You know, there is just some injury news that we have to wait on. But the Memphis situation is one where I do think they're all kind of cheap and we can really fit all the Boston players in with them. It's an easy game to stack in that one. He's a guy that could go for 30 DK points. He's a guy that could go for 10. Honestly, I, I either way, it's just nothing more than a punt play for us. So moving on to center here. Jonas Valanciunas just really like him as a play as well. So he's a guy that's always averaged a DK point per minute. We've seen that really throughout his career. Uh, with John Morant out, the usage is going to go somewhere, and I expect it to kind of just be spread out, but obviously Jonas Valanciunas is going to see some of that. What is going on? I got to get... Oh, it's because his freaking form indicator. I'll get that updated there. Um, <laughs> because he has a little foreign accent on there. So I'll get that updated, but uh, I do expect Jonas Valanciunas to really go off. I mean, recently he's dominated almost 40 DK points in every game thus far. Um, at 7.7, to get a guy that's going to easily score 40 DK points, and I do think he's going to easily score it, that is something that's very appealing to me. And he's really the only logical center to pay up for, the one that makes the most sense to pay up for on the slate. Uh, after that, you know, nothing that we love too much, anything else. We're kind of really just forcing in there, and I don't want to do that on today's slate. So let's wrap up this build for today, and then we'll be getting out of here. Once again, I, I will say it does feel like we're forcing a lot in here on today's slate. All right, so I do really want to fit Middleton in there. 
because if that game stays relatively close, you know, you can easily play him. And we left with 5.1, which I don't feel great about. I would rather not have that leftover. So, you know, Bojan Bogdanovic, I do think he's going to hit value, but just how much will he hit value? That's the question there. And I don't know right now. Let's see where we can go. Lonnie Walker, I don't mind as well. I should mention the Spurs. You know, they're all kind of priced down a little bit, so I don't mind them as plays. You could easily roll with them if you want to go that route. You could easily do that. For now, I'm going to put Hood in there with the expectation that Gary Trent Jr. is going to be out and with the expectation that Hood is going to see right around 20 minutes or so, which at his price point, you know, that helps a lot. Then we can easily afford to pay up for, you know, someone up here, which we don't feel good about, but we could end up on them. So for now... No, let's put Dylan Brooks here because I do kind of want to play him. I think those shot attempts are going to be there. I think the usage is going to be there. And then we can afford, you know, someone like Peyton Pritchard, who is kind of my bull call of the day. And there we go. That is the lineup for today's slate. So make sure to check out the, you know, cheat sheet here. It's updated. And then we also do have the lineup builder there for you guys as well it's something that you do have to play around with a little bit something that you kind of got to familiarize yourself with but once you get it down it works pretty well you have to change the average points there to what you're projecting them to score maybe juice them up a little bit so that it forces some of the players into your builds there um like let's say you know let me go to pj washington here and i'll go to jonas valentius so jonas valentius i do think is going to score like not 50 but we'll juice it up a little bit so that it's obviously pulling him in there. So we want him in there. You can easily fit him in there. And then where's PJ Washington? Let's do a control fine. Washington, yeah, he's going to score more than that. And I don't really know why Goran Dragic was as high owned as he was uh, yesterday. So that was a little bit surprising to me. I know Jimmy Butler was out, but that was a little bit weird to me. So that's how you can easily use it. And then you just do your build here. Um, 20 lineups, whatever salary you want left over. And then you're good to go. But that's all I have for you guys on today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and subscribe. I'm going to start doing these more often, more frequently. Trying to do, you know, it every morning here. And then eventually, once we start getting traction, I'm going to start going live. So, you know, if you guys like, if you guys subscribe, that helps. If you guys, you know, hit that notification bell when we go live, that helps as well. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, let's keep cashing.